Hi, it's Sherry. Welcome to Canterbury Cottage. Now that your Christmas decor is down and packed away, are you bored with your same old decor? Well, if you are, I have the perfect video in store for you today. I'm going to show you several easy and budget-friendly ways that you can refresh your home for the new year. And we're going to look at some of the hottest new trends for inspiration. I'm going to show you how to make a coffee table out of vintage books, how to age brass, how to rewire a vintage lamp, how to wallpaper an accent wall, and so much more. In fact, I have 15 projects in total. So, let's get started! No matter how beautiful our home decor may be, over time we tire of it. It's human nature. But you don't need to completely redo a room. Adding just a few new or special touches can spruce up a room and make your decor feel like new. So why not look at the new trends for inspiration? I'm only going to use those items that I already love and that fit in with my current personal style. Round shapes and just about anything vintage is so on trend right now. So I decided to move my oval coffee table to my front living room and make a new coffee table for my library using lots and lots of vintage books. I had thrifted a large round wood coffee table a couple years ago and it had been sitting in my basement ever since. It was missing a support bar and the legs were wobbly, so I just removed everything from the wood top. Then I went around my house and collected up a bunch of vintage books that I really didn't care much about. I stacked the books up first in five piles and then in six piles and used a level to make sure that each pile was exactly the same height as all the others. I had to shuffle the books around quite a bit to get six piles that were the same height. I cleaned the wood with Orange Glow Furniture Polish, which does a nice job of concealing scratches. I had a bunch of shiny brass knobs that I wanted to age and use on my kitchen cabinets. To remove the lacquer finish, I soaked the knobs in some acetone for a couple hours. You could also use nail polish remover. You can see when the lacquer is coming loose, and then you can just wipe it off the knob using an old towel or sponge. Once the lacquer is removed, Immerse the knobs in some brass ager. I ordered mine from Amazon. You're only going to want to leave the knobs in the ager for a few seconds. That's how quickly it works. Once the color has changed, pull the knobs out and rinse them well in water. If your knobs don't change color in the ager, then they probably aren't real brass. Since I was changing out my cabinet knobs, I used that as an opportunity to give all my cabinet doors a good cleaning. I have always liked lights that make a statement, so when my brother gifted me this unique vintage lamp with faulty wiring, I knew I was going to try to rewire it. 
I took the wire from an existing lamp that I wasn't using by loosening the screws on either side of the socket and then pulling on the cord from the bottom of the lamp. I ran this cord through my vintage lamp and up through the socket cap or socket base. I wrapped the wires around the screws on the socket from the vintage lamp and tightened the screws. Then I slid the outer shell over the socket and popped it back into the socket base. I have recessed or can lights over my kitchen island, which I converted with can conversion pendants. These are great as long as you only want a one light pendant, but I had always wanted pendants that made a bigger statement and gave off more light. So I purchased this recessed light converter kit, which would allow me to hang any light fixture that I liked. First, I removed the can conversion pendant, and then I removed the housing and trim from the can light. I screwed the socket with wires from the converter kit into the light bulb socket. I adjusted the large brace to spread across the opening, then I attached each end of the brace to the inside of the can wall using the self-drilling screws that came in the kit. Then I attached the small brace to the large brace using the machine screws that came in the kit. I attached the copper wire and screw to the inside to ground the light. I popped on the metal medallion and then the white plastic medallion to hide the edges of the canned light. And then I was ready to attach the light of my choice. After adjusting your cord and chain to your desired length, use an S-hook to hang your light from the brace. This will free your hands up to attach the wires from the socket to the wires on your new light. Press the canopy of your new light tightly against the white medallion and then tighten the collar. Here is an easy way to add lots of texture and an element of nature to your decor this year. Cut out a large rectangle of craft paper and fold over the top edge. Collect up whatever dried flowers you have on hand. I often buy these at the thrift store. Once you have a nice sized bundle, tie it off with some florist wire or a piece of twine. Cut off the stems in a straight line about two inches below your piece of wire. Wrap your dried flowers with the piece of craft paper using a dot of hot glue along the top edge to hold it together. Add a few additional dried flowers if it's not full enough. Twist some wire or tie some twine around the craft paper about three-fourths of the way down. My stems moved around some, and so I trimmed them up into a straight line again. And then I added a pretty velvet bow around the wire. I printed out a vintage label, which I attached to the brown paper with some Mod Podge. I am not a fan of the rounded sofas and chairs that are popular this year, so I'll be bringing curves into my decor in other ways. 
like round frames, which I happen to love. To give it a vintage look, I painted over the frames and the ceramic coasters in the middle with two coats of black chalk paint. When the paint was dry, I lightly distressed the frames, and then I printed out some vintage bird images. That's right, you know I love birds. Print them out a little larger than you need so that you'll have a little extra room to play with. I went around the coaster with my fingernail making an impression so that I would have a line to cut along. I applied Mod Podge to the coaster and to the back of the bird image and then pressed it in place. I went around the outer edge of the coaster with an X-Acto knife, cutting off any extra paper. And then I let the Mod Podge dry. I distressed the wood frame with some fine grit sandpaper and then applied a coat of clear wax, wiping off the excess. When the Mod Podge was dry, I applied a top coat of Mod Podge to protect the image. I have an inkjet printer and I use generic ink cartridges. I just make sure that my ink is fully dry before applying Mod Podge and I seldom have any issues with ink runs. However, if you are having issues, you might try spraying your image with hairspray and letting it dry before applying Mod Podge. If there is one word that sums up 2022 style, it is texture. And that includes traditional elements like fringe. So I decided to add fringe not to one, but to two pieces of furniture. It is so easy to attach. Use Gorilla Glue Sticks and hot glue the top edge of the fringe either just above or below the piping that runs along the bottom of your chair or sofa. Last year, I hot glued fringe to an outdoor umbrella, and even though it was out in the weather, it held up perfectly all summer long. If you buy fringe when it's on sale at Hobby Lobby for 40% off, it's not that expensive. I spent about $12 on the fringe for the chair, and another $15 on the fringe for the sofa. After texture, the second most popular trend this year might just be floral patterns. And an easy way to add some floral to your decor is with throw pillows. I'm going to cover a pillow that I already have using a vintage tablecloth that I found at Goodwill for $1.99. With the right sides of fabric together, I stitched up three full sides of the fabric and a little less than half on the fourth side so that I would have a hole large enough to squeeze the pillow through. Once your pillow is inside your cover, you can hand or machine sew the opening closed. You can even hot glue the opening closed. I liked the pillow so well that I decided to use the fabric to cover a lampshade for my new vintage lamp. I covered the shade with spray adhesive and then rolled it across the fabric, pulling the fabric against the shade. Once the shade was covered with the fabric, I began cutting off the extra along the top and the bottom. I also cut off the fabric where it met itself on the side of the shade so that I could create a straight line. I folded the top fabric under and added a little more spray adhesive to hold it in place. 
Then I sprayed the inside top and bottom edges of the shade and began folding the fabric to the inside. It was necessary to cut some slits in the fabric so that it would lay flat against the shade. I had a little fringe left, so I decided to hot glue it along the bottom edge of the shade, because why not? All things vintage are in style now, including vintage art, which is great because it is generally so much cheaper than buying new art. I bought this vintage print of Beethoven's home for just $2 at a local thrift store. I love layering old prints in my bookshelves. Because people are spending more time at home, we are looking for ways to create cozy, separate spaces within our open floor plan homes. So I decided to remove a chair and rearrange the furniture in my sitting room to create a little nook where I could sit and have a cup of coffee or read a book. I think this might just be my new favorite spot. In case you haven't heard, wallpaper is back, baby, and I decided to refresh my mudroom with some twall wallpaper I had been eyeing. I have always loved twall patterns, and I love the soft greens and grays in this wallpaper that I ordered from Amazon. I cut my first strip of wallpaper about a foot longer than what I would need, and because it was pre-pasted wallpaper, I rolled it around in a sink of water. Then I pulled it out and folded the back sides together. This is called booking. And you want to let the wallpaper rest in this position for about five minutes before applying it to your wall. Some people will draw a straight vertical line to get the first piece of wallpaper up straight, but I'm just going to align my piece of paper with the corner because I'm just wallpapering a very small section. Once I have the paper aligned with the corner, I use a smoothing tool to spread out the wallpaper and remove any wrinkles or bubbles. Then use a sharp blade to cut off the extra paper at the top and the bottom and around any intruding objects like light switches or outlets. I recommend using a utility knife because the blade dulls quickly from the wallpaper paste, so you'll want to be able to change the blade out frequently. When applying the next sheet of wallpaper, make sure that you cut the sheet long enough that you can match up your pattern. Be sure to wipe away any excess glue before it dries. I'm sure you've already heard that green is the color to try in 2022. And since I love green, I decided to add a few green accents to my mudroom. I spray painted this metal sign with camouflage green spray paint because that's one of the few green shades I can still find in my stores. To give it an aged appearance, I distressed it a bit with some sandpaper and then applied a coat of white wax, wiping away most of it. I also thought this black mailbox that I had been using in the mudroom was a little too harsh against the soft colors of the wallpaper, so I traded it out for a mailbox I had hanging in my laundry room that also had a touch of green paint left on it. Recently, Sarah of She Holds Dearly said that she was inspired by one of my projects 
to paint a metal wall plate that she had thrifted. Well, when I saw how her plate turned out, I was inspired to start looking for a plate for myself. And luckily, I found one. Sarah painted her plate white, which I loved, but I decided to paint mine with Waverly's Mineral Chalk Paint, and I followed it with a coat of white wax, which gives the plate a cement-like appearance. When we bought this house, I replaced all of the plastic light switch plates with silver metal ones, but now I am so tired of silver. So I took them down, gave them a good cleaning, and then spray painted them with three coats of matte black spray paint. What an easy refresh for the cost of one can of spray paint. I hope you got some ideas today for refreshing your own home decor. I've been thinking about making this a monthly installment for the rest of the year where I would refresh the decor of one room in my home once a month. So you'll have to let me know what you think of that idea. Some of you may have noticed that I hit 100,000 subscribers this week. Trust me, no one is more surprised than me, except maybe my children. <laughs> When I started this channel last February, I hoped that maybe by the end of the first year, I would have a thousand subscribers. And when I hit a thousand subscribers, I wondered if I could possibly get to 10,000 subscribers in my first year. But never could I possibly have imagined a hundred thousand. I can never appropriately express my sincere appreciation to each and every one of you. Thank you so very much for continuing to watch my channel, for tuning in every Tuesday to see what I'm going to disassemble or decoupage this week. So from the bottom of my heart, I say thank you, thank you, Thank you, and I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye for now.